Hey there, it's Thursday the 2nd of February 2023 and we're coming into the city from the east on board A1 class tram number 238 running on Route 12 with a Route 109 C class hot on our heels. We're coming up to the stop before Parliament Station and from there I'm going to take you on a real time walk through the Melbourne CBD. As usual we're going to see lots of trains and trams as well as some other incidental stuff along the way. It's still summer, but it's only 16 degrees and quite windy. Melbourne is known for its erratic weather and today is a good example. Please check for traffic before exiting the tram. It might not look likely now, but it's going to rain before the end of this walk. This stop is Parliament Station. Stop 10. That uh, red car there did stop correctly behind the A-Class, but the C-Class then pulled up beside it and opened its doors. So you can see that these uh, platform stops where the, the road lane just goes over the top of the platform are never ideal. So in that park straight ahead over there is one of the entrances to Parliament Railway Station which has currently got some sort of construction happening and I think this entrance is actually closed but luckily I wasn't planning on going down there. There's an E-Class coming on Route 11. Here we're coming up to the intersection of uh, Spring Street and Collins Street uh, and the road we're actually walking along now is MacArthur Street uh, which is a sort of an interesting shape junction because the, the tram line curves coming out of Collins Street towards MacArthur Street uh, so it's not a, uh, not a 90 degree junction in the middle and obviously a very custom piece of track work there. Now I was going to show you the old treasury building here but it's uh, covered in scaffolding currently but uh, if you just imagine very nice old building it's right there on the left So the only trams that run north-south on Spring Street here are City Circle trams, Route 35. And as well as the uh, 11, 12 and 109 that come down MacArthur Street there into to Collins, there's also Route 48 which swings around uh, west to south from Collins Street into Spring Street. So. Um, all parts of this junction do get used on a regular basis. So just ahead and on the left here we have the Treasury Gardens which are pretty typical of some of the many gardens that are around inner Melbourne 
and one of the things that make this such a good livable city uh, we have so much really good parkland and uh, they're obviously great places to spend time and they're also uh, great for walkability they allow a lot of uh, extra pedestrian routes uh, close to the city and the treasury gardens are relatively small but they do pretty much join up to the Fitzroy Gardens which are a little bit further over um, and together it's a, a really large green space close to the city. This part of the walk is going to be a little bit slow in terms of things happening and um, I'm going to show you it's going to get much busier again shortly once we get around the corner and a bit closer to the busier part of the city but um, we are going to take a little stroll just through the corner of the gardens here to give a bit of an idea of what they look like. Just coming up on the right here, this funny concrete construction with a garden bed on the top. I think, and I haven't actually looked this up, I think that's probably a vent for the city loop, which uh, is pretty close to underneath us here. So now we're approaching the intersection of Wellington Parade, Spring Street and Flinders Street off to the right. Our Route 48 trams turn left into Wellington Parade here and uh, City Circle turns right into Flinders Street and you also have Route 75 which uh, runs east-west along uh, Flinders Street and Wellington Parade. So another three-way junction and another bit of fairly custom track work because it's not uh, it's not exactly right angles and there's also a bit of a slope going up to the left there, up Spring Street. And just coming up from the street on the right there, we have a W8 class on the city circle. And there's an A class on Route 48, about to turn left there. W8 class number 957, running anti clockwise. And there's another W class running clockwise just coming down the hill from Spring Street. So we're going to get uh, double W's. Or maybe that should be quadruple U. And then there's a C-Class on uh, Route 48, and that's 3001, the C-Class class leader. You notice it's in an advertising colour scheme, but the nose at this end is just plain white, uh, which suggests it's been in an accident with a road vehicle since it had that colour scheme applied. And you'll see that quite commonly with the C-Class. And there's a B2 class there on Route 75, it's going to come straight across into Flinders Street.
just going to walk across the road here and this uh, green box on the right, notice it says m and TB on it. That is Melbourne and Metropolitan Tramways Board, which ran Melbourne's tramways between 1919 and 1983. And we're just going to walk into this really crappy car park here and have a look over the side. There's an ex-trackless coming in on the Clifton Hill Group Charlie Mont. The most useful thing about this car park is providing a photography vantage point for this location. Make a nice little park I reckon. Over on the right, you see that really tall apartment building with the blue squiggles all over it. Right on the top of that is a really cool private rooftop garden, um, which has amazing views out over this part of the city, and obviously the railway from there. There's an episode of Gardening Australia that talks about it and has some footage up there, and I did find a little clip from that, which I will link down in the video description. See there on the left we have the main railway line it's heading out towards Richmond there. This is the former site of Jollymont Yard where essentially the vast majority of the suburban fleet used to be stabled and also Jollymont workshops used to be out there. Um, so this is Batman Avenue here uh, where tram route 70 comes in and if we look out over the railway past that Raven you can see the MCG in the distance. That's the Clifton Hill group of lines going off on the left uh, to Hasbridge and Mernda. this way we can see over to uh, Federation Square which is that building that the railway lines all disappear underneath and behind that are the South Bank skyscrapers with um, the Eureka Tower and Australia 108. You can see those flags flapping it but it really is very windy out here. to 
wait a little while for something to happen there, but um, now we have an up train coming in from the Clifton Hill Group and a down train heading out on the Bernard Local. And that ramp going down on the right is the uh, City Circle Tunnel, which runs around and connects to the City Loop at Parliament and is only used very infrequently. It's another uh, up train on the up Burnley through line. If you want to understand what's going on with um, the huge maze of track down there, I did make a video explaining this whole area, which I'll put a link to. There's a horse trough there, in case anybody needs to refill their horse. And there's a Comenge coming in towards Flinders Strait. In fact, there's another Comenge coming the other direction as well. These trains date from the 80s and are now in the process of being withdrawn. I think they'll still be around for a few years yet, and there are quite a lot of them, but um, I'll always take any opportunity I can to photograph them. Now this gate here, at least I think it's this one, uh, used to lead to a footbridge which went out over Jollymont Yard and uh, once upon a time provided a good view of Jollymont Yard, but uh, it's been gone since the early 90s. Over on the right you can see the Forum Theatre, and on the left we have Federation Square, which we'll have to have a look at in a moment. And down below us here is where the end of the platforms of Prince's Bridge Station used to be, which is where the Clifton Hill Group trains used to run in. You can see that space down on the left there, where there was one platform, and the other one was on the other side, that brick building at the end was a signal box. Uh, and this, so Federation Square was built over the railway lines, it was essentially decked over and built in thin air, and is a pretty good example of um, reclaiming some space over the top of the railway and turning it into a, a good public space. And there is B2 class 2003, which uh, if you watched my last walking video, you will know is the first B2 class, which we saw in that video as well. Now we're just going to duck into Federation Square and take a little detour here, because it is a really interesting building, and it's actually a good pedestrian route through here as well. 
Uh, this space here quite often has markets in it. It's used for all sorts of public events. There are also some cafes in here and there's a branch of the NGV, the National Gallery, in here. There's a picture of a W class outside Flinders Street. And if we look closely, despite being black and white, it's actually a modern photo because that is a W class with a pantograph. There's some cool little gardens in here with tree ferns, which are found naturally not all that far from here, about maybe 30 k's away towards the Dandenongs. Here is the square part of Federation Square and you can see straight ahead the Flinders Street Station building over on the right there. Over there on the left there's a stage and a big TV screen which uh, shows major sporting events and things. Whenever there's uh, sporting events overseas with Australian teams playing they play it here and no matter what time of day or night it is this uh, square, particularly for soccer, will fill up with sporting fans. So we're now approaching Flinders Street Station and we're at the uh, Federation Square tram stop which is on the first part of St Kilda Road. It turns into Swanson Street on the other side of the intersection off to the right there and uh, this is the busiest tram corridor in the world with eight tram routes on it. And this stop, this tram stop, is, I would assume, probably one of the busiest tram stops in the world, too. It's extremely busy. There's a D1 class there, and a Z, and a B2. If you have a close look at the pedestrian lights here, you'll see that the little green and red people are women instead of the usual male figures. This was done in 2017, initially as a trial, and obviously it was successful and they're still here. Not sure why anyone thought it wouldn't be successful. Although some people in the media did try very hard to get angry about it. Of course, another way of looking at this is that these lights just show a person wearing a dress and the standard ones show a person wearing pants, and neither are intrinsically gendered figures. I did see one person mention that it was good seeing uh, more representation of Scottish men around the city. Telstra payphone there, which are actually not payphones anymore, they made them all free. And here comes a D1 class, one of the art trams. That's a D1 class 3532 with the artwork by Patricia McKean. 
and all the art trams in this year's program are done by Indigenous Australian artists. So here is B2 class 2098 heading north on Route 1 to East Coburg and I think we might go for a bit of a ride in it up Swanston Street. Might have been a bit difficult to see, but a bird, a common miner, just uh, hopped on the roof of that D-Class and went for a ride. I noticed there's a lot of Yarra Tram staff standing on the platform there. Uh, because there are eight different tram routes here, and they all go to different destinations heading south. Heading north, most of them go to Melbourne Uni, but heading south, they're all different destinations. Um, every afternoon, in the afternoon peak, they have a whole lot of staff there to make announcements and help people find the right tram. So this part of Swanson Street is car free, so it's a pretty major cycling thoroughfare as well as being an extremely busy tram thoroughfare. On the left there is St Paul's Cathedral and there's a cross over there so trams can terminate here in, during disruptions. And on the left hand side there is the construction site for the new Town Hall Underground Station, which is part of the Melbourne Metro Tunnel. So that's Collins Street with uh, 11, 12, 48 and 109 on it, we were nearby before. And that's the Melbourne Town Hall on the left there. And we're now approaching Burke Street. Um, oh, and here is a car that has illegally driven down the car free section. And what a beautiful sight that is. The cops have found them. So yeah, we're now approaching Burke Street with uh, 
routes 86 and 96 on it and we're going to go for a walk down Burke Strait Mall which is by far the best pedestrianised section in Melbourne. So Burke Street is, under normal circumstances, entirely operated by E-classes uh, with the exception of a handful of C2 class bumblebees which run on 96, there's only five of them. If you watched the previous video you'll remember we didn't see any and uh, spoiler alert, we don't see one this time either, I'm not having great luck with them. So Burke Street Mall is a really cool open space, as you can see everyone just wanders around in amongst the trams. The trams crawl along with their hazard lights on and uh, for the most part from what I've seen people behave pretty safely around the trams, few exceptions, but it does work surprisingly well. And because trams behave in such a predictable way you can you know you can walk around like this and you can be sure what the tram is going to do so it's much safer than if this was road vehicles or you know, even buses um, you can you can't predict their movements to the extent that you can with trams some swivelly seats here so you can choose to look at either the shop or the trams. My only complaint about Burke Street is that most of the shops along here are just clothes shops. There's actually, I think it'd be really nice if there was a few cafes and things here. I've, I've actually never needed to go into any of these shops. I only ever come here to look at trams pretty much. One big safety fail is the position of this big round thing, whatever this is, which blocks your view of approaching trams pretty badly from this angle, um, and, oh, and scooters. Uh, I have no idea why they put it so close to the track, it's quite dangerous. You might notice there's quite a lot of bollards here, and just a little warning if you're watching with kids, uh, I am about to talk about some violence that happened here. In 2017, a guy went on a rampage in a Holden Commodore down this street. He killed six people and injured 27. Uh, it's now known as the Burke Street Massacre. It was a very dark day in Melbourne's modern history. And ever since then, there's been a lot more uh, bollards like this and other protective measures all over the city, but especially here.
Now just here we have a good example of the difference between the E1 and E2 class trams. So there's 100 E-class all up, and they changed the design halfway through, the first 50 are E1s, second 50 are E2s. That tram on the left, 6016, is an E1, and you can see its, it's uh, lights fan out in, as they come down the front. And then uh, tram 69 on the right there has this much uh, nicer, slim lighting arrangement. So they, they changed the design of the cab to provide better visibility, essentially. It's a, bit, it's a pretty subtle change visually, but once you notice it, you'll, you'll be able to spot it. And this time it's two E1s, numbers 9 and 12. So straight ahead is Elizabeth Street, which carries routes 57, 59 and 19. And on the right, the building on the right there is the old GPO building, the old General Post Office. And if you come up here, a really good spot to just stand and uh, people watch or tram watch without getting in anyone's way. And there's another art tram there, that's D2 class 5002, artwork by Tegan Murdoch. There's one art tram from each tram depot, and that would be the Brunswick depot. Notice there's a guy taking some video down there with a gimbal who was standing stupidly close to the front of that tram as it pulled into the stop. now taking some really epic footage of some pigeons. At this point I was planning on catching a tram heading up the hill there, but I looked all the way up back as far as Parliament and I couldn't see anything. So we're just going to walk up to the next stop instead.
So we're now heading west along Burke Strait and this will be a slightly quieter part of the walk. There's not going to be a lot happening along here. So if you just want to see lots of action you could skip ahead a bit here but if you're enjoying the pace of the walk, stick around. There's a drive through Macca's there for some reason. Just on the right there is Hardware Lane, which is one of Melbourne's more well-known laneways. There's one from cafes and restaurants and stuff. Although at this time of day, from this angle, it actually just looks extremely boring. This part of the city is a lot more business oriented and less fun oriented. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of very large commercial buildings and not quite as many people walking around here. But this part of the street is actually still quite nice with the uh, plane trees lining the street. It's actually become a bit of a problem as much as these plane trees look really nice. Uh, the ones that were chosen to be planted here are all males and the males shed a lot of pollen um, at a certain time of year and it actually causes a lot of trouble with people with hay fever throughout the city. It can become quite overwhelming in, in patches at certain times. There has been some talk about replacing them with more suitable trees but there's, there's no easy answer to that because it would cause a very long period in between of not having trees or only having small trees. So for the moment that's what we've got and I just walked along that tram platform to see if there are any trams coming there still isn't so there's a, a big delay happening westbound on Burke Street at the moment and uh, what usually happens in these circumstances is the you get no trams for a long time and then you get a bunch they all come together so that's what we can expect to see shortly hopefully Now coming up to William Street, uh, which Route 58 runs along. 
running north south here and uh, in terms of tramway streets within the CBD this is sort of a bit of a, a back street there's a uh, it's, there's only one tram route running along here and it's relatively quiet, although it has become quite a busy route in recent years. But back sort of 20 years ago, it actually used to get no trams on a weekend here. We still haven't had any westbound trams along Burke Street here, but I'm determined to go for a ride on an E-Class as part of this video, so we're going to wait for one here. And now I'm going to fast forward slightly into the future so that you don't have to do the boring wait with me. And finally, here comes an E-Class. So usually when you get a delay like this, you end up with a bunch of trams arriving. Normally the first one will be absolutely packed, so it's best to let it go past and get on the second one. See a couple of cars there doing hook turns, and supposed to wait till the light goes green before they make the turn. They went slightly before. So as predicted, this tram is completely jam-packed. I can see another one just coming up the hill behind it. And here's another comparison of an E1 and an E2. E1-6003 and E2-6090. and the driver's just having a little bit of trouble getting one of those front doors closed because there's so many people crammed in there. So 
Uh, even this tram is pretty close to full. There is actually a third tram just behind it, but I'm not going to wait anymore. I'm going to jump on this one. Here we are at the end of Burke Street. We've just arrived at Spencer Street and Southern Cross Station is just across the road there and it's just started to rain. So that tram is a route 96 turning left into Spencer Street, route 86 turns right here and uh, trams can run north-south along Spencer Street there. Um, there isn't any regular route that uses it but it is very frequently used by diversions or trams accessing depots. And you can see between the rails there, there's a reminder for drivers to make sure they follow the correct route here. Unlike trains, which have their routes set for them, uh, tram drivers actually operate the points to decide which way to go. So it is a very real possibility that they can make a mistake and go the wrong way. And it does happen every now and then. Uh, this tram here, 6029, uh, it's an E1 class, but due to being in an accident or something, it's one of a handful of cars that's actually got an E2 class cab on one end, uh, so it's got one of each style of cab, and they've become known as cat dog cars, and you'll understand why that is if you were watching kids TV in the late 90s. see this area gets so busy with pedestrians changing between the trams and Southern Cross Station that they've actually reclaimed some of the road space here for pedestrians to wait in.
us a lot more of those bollards here for exactly the same reason. Okay, so we're going to head up now into Southern Cross Station and up this enormous staircase slash advertising board. It's quite weird, there are a lot of staircases and escalators around Southern Cross that are way too narrow, but for some reason they went absolutely all out with this one, which is great, but I'm not actually sure it needs to be quite this wide. So we're just going to duck over here and have a quick look out across the platforms. Here we are in the Southern Cross Station. In the foreground here you've got uh, V-Line regional trains and in the distance you can see the suburban platforms. I said just before about that staircase being extremely high capacity you then have places like this with super narrow small number of ticket barriers and once you're on the other side there's posts everywhere and just really not well designed for pedestrian flow at all at some point I'll probably make a video about the failings of Southern Cross because there are lots of them so down there we have an N class on a set of H cars, that is N460 City of Castle May. All the N classes are named after uh, Victorian regional towns. Okay, there is one that's City of Albury, which is just across the border in New South Wales, but uh, most of them are Victorian towns. And those H carriages were rebuilt from Harris EMU suburban cars, which were built in the 50s originally, rebuilt in the 80s very extensively, but they are actually from the 50s and uh, the N-Class were built in the 80s. And there's a Velocity departing, heading for South Geelong. You might notice the Velocities have a decal on the side that says Made in Victoria for Victoria, matching the one on the A-Class trams, which says Made in Melbourne for Melbourne. And they are made in the same factory in Dandenong. V-Line quite often applies special decals to the centre cars of the three car velocity sets. This one's carrying a special pride livery. The locomotive haul trains are probably on a bit of a ticking clock now with more and more velocities in service. And there has been a real push towards moving the whole fleet towards rail cars, which I actually think is pretty sad, but that's the way we're going. And who knows, but we've probably only got a few years left of the end classes at this stage on passenger trains.
So we're now going to walk down onto platforms 9 and 10, which, which is the Clifton Hill group on the left and the Burnley group on the right. Again, I have made a video explaining this area as well, if you'd like to learn more about the layout here. Belgrave train number 10, Express with you and Campbell on box 7, Belgrave service on 10, Hello my customers, please train to Richmond. On the right there, there's an Extrapolis set coming in on a Belgrave service by the loop. See those little TV screens on the right? They're called spot monitors, and uh, because Melbourne suburban trains are operated by only one person since the mid 90s, it's the driver, uh, they're actually responsible for checking that the doorways are clear prior to departure, and those screens give them better visibility along the platform to make sure that's the case. And there's a comment sitting in the middle track there. I assume following the normal logic is called track 10A. Trains often sit there for a brief period of time waiting for a path out the other side. It'll be an empty cars movement from a yard somewhere. Notice the second three cars this command set have light grey bogies. A lot of these bogies were found to have cracks in them and had to be replaced fairly recently. And I'm pretty sure those grey ones are new ones that have been replaced as part of the program. So this train coming in here on platform 10 is a Murlbach train. Murlbach is the second last station on the Lilydale line. So uh, it might seem a bit odd to have a train that terminates one stop short of the terminus, but uh, it is actually quite a long way from Rollerbike to Lilydale, and it's single track, so I assume it isn't possible to timetable this train all the way through to Lilydale. Um, I had a quick glance at the timetable, and from my quick look, it looks like this is actually the only Rollerbike train in the weekday timetable, so uh, quite an unusual service. And that's a Mernda train coming in on the other platform there. Uh, now I need to catch one of these trains into the city loop, and I'm going to get on the Rollerbike just for novelty value. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks once again for coming along. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. I will certainly be making more of this style of video as we go along. So we're just heading down into the city loop and we're departing parallel to the Mernda train over there. Uh, this is the only city loop entrance where two tracks go down the same ramp before going into their respective tunnels. So every other entrance to the city loop is just a single track going down a ramp. So this is a unique entrance. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with that final fact and uh, hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Thank you.